Welcome back, WNST, Taos in Baltimore, and Baltimore positive when we, uh, hopefully the next time we have Marty Conway, I don't have the new Chiron rolling, the new website will be out, I can tour you through it, Marty, but, uh, you know, the business of sports has started back up again, and uh, the, the business of America, the National Football League, I figure no better time to bring on Marty Conway, our friend and advisor and uh, Georgetown professor and apparently cohabitor with a kindergarten class. I mean, the Zoom thing's new for you and me, so I do like looking at you, and I do like seeing I can room rate you a little bit, but I had no idea that, uh, that your wife is an educator. No wonder you got so smart, Mark. Yeah, so we've been, uh, we've been virtual in uh, K through fourth grade for since March, and uh, it's really kicked up uh, this fall. So, yeah, every, every morning the kindergartners wake me up whether I'm ready or not because they're wide awake, and... Uh, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, it's amazing. I, I always knew that these were amazing people and their dedication, but when you're now people who have kids and have to stay home and see what teachers do or spouses of teachers, it really is amazing what they do and they are far, far underpaid and undervalued. So um, I learn more about that every day. Well, Marty, you're, uh, you're like my fifth Zoom of the day, and it's still early in the morning. I haven't even had my peach cake and my Royal Farms coffee yet. And every person that I have Zoomed with into their home, wherever they are, all had a kid situation in one way. Yeah. Grandkid, kids, yeah. teacher, home, yeah. uh, where am I going to work? How am I going to do this? I'm getting on my first airplane this week. You know, we talk <laughs> about, you know, before COVID, now, I'm actually flying to Houston. I'm going to get away and hang in a pool for a couple of days and get this website launched and just go into the, the Nestor cave. But the notion of flying is something like, I didn't think there'd be a point in my life where I'd be seven months without being sick, where, where I don't fly and how different that's going to be. I think every part of this including football, right? We've all seen a million football games in a million different ways. Haven't seen much like we saw over the weekend. I mean, I, I found it interesting, and I've said this a bunch, that even Al Michaels was a little spooked doing a game in a 100,000-seat stadium. It was built for $5 billion in his community where he couldn't get over that there was nobody there. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you, look, you can't understand how – uh, what the importance of fans really are. I know I tweeted this out, but th there are no virtual fans, Nestor. This is just a, they're trying to hoodwink, pull, you know, pull something over your face, a mask, whatever it is, because uh, fans need to be there. They are people. They behave in sometimes unpredictable ways. And look, I understand putting crowd noise in under the broadcast, but again, if you're watching something, your eyes are not deceiving you, right? I can see there are no people there, so why am I hearing this as well? So, but it's just part and parcel. I mean, fans are the soundtrack of sports. Let's be honest, right? Um, the, the 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 games are great movies. They're sometimes classic movies, but the fans in their participation is the soundtrack. That's why NFL films has been as popular as they were, not because they really measured the games that great. They did a nice job with that, but everything else they did, the sideline, the fans, pregame, tailgating, you name it, that's what's grown the NFL. The game, as we can see, the games themselves are fine. Some are good, some are really good, some are not. But when you throw fans into the mix, that's what makes it America's obsession. Not, not how pretty the games are, not how well the passes are thrown, et cetera. It's that fan participation. And I think every owner and every team president now truly understands that they've seen something that they never thought they were going to have to see in the NFL because back in March and April, we were thinking we'd be far beyond this, or we'd be at a position where, you know, it wouldn't affect the NFL. Well, it has. And now that has affected literally every sport in our country. Well, what did you make of it over the weekend? And, you know, you're a longtime sports executive. You sat in these meetings where they were trying to make everything perfect on TV and things got so perfect that a decade ago, Dick Cass came to me and said, you know, the biggest concern in the league, when we would get together at these owners' meetings at the Biltmore, down in the break, Breakers, or wherever it would be, the biggest concern was always the fan experience in the stadium. It's the reason the Ravens spent all this money in building these giant boards, and they were going to make it better to be at the stadium than it is to be at home. Marty, I, I'm about to get on a plane and fly and sit on the roof. I mean, and I, I've joked with all the Houston reporters, it's kind of like the hook of the moon. Like the credit, it's like you're sitting on the moon when you're looking down at, you know, at the field in Houston. And John McClain said, why are you coming down here? I said, 
well, I've done this my whole life. I've never done this. I've, I haven't been to an empty stadium yet. Luke's done 20 empty baseball games. We only have one credential this week, so Luke covered that. We're only going to have one credential next week for Mahomes, so Luke's going to cover that. So I'm going down, and I, I think we're all um, – I sat in my bed with my cat, and my laptop, my wife watched the game in the front of the house. I watched it in the back. She was two seconds ahead of me, so I got to hear her cheer. Two seconds, she run back. We'd high five. And I guess that's the way we're going to do it here for a little while, right? And I know what happened over the weekend that I felt. I looked at my wallet, and I thought, well, that's 300 bucks I didn't spend going to Ravens game this week, yeah. right? And then that's going to be 300 more next Monday night. And, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, yeah. and on top, and that's you – know, I'm flying to Houston, so I'm taking on that expense. But I'm not – doing trips to Washington and Philadelphia and, and bus trips and like all the things we'd normally be doing. And the experience of being on buses and planes and staying at the courtyard or staying at the Four Seasons or being with the team or without the team, I've done all of that. I haven't done an empty stadium and I haven't done one in bed with my cat on Twitter yet. And it's going to become normal. And I don't know that I'm going to be running out, holding off $100 bills and saying, here, Dick, take it back. I mean, here, here's my three grand. Here's my eight grand. Here's my 10 grand. I want those eight experiences back. I might only only want one or two of them. I I don't know, but I know that was always your biggest concern. And I know over the 40 years you've witnessed the demise of Orioles baseball, people getting out of the habit of going to the ballpark, right? Like, and that's what all of these sports are going to be dealing with. And I don't, I don't know how quickly people are going to run back and bust off $100 bills to get their seat on a hot day when they've sat in bed with their cat and had Rofo chicken like I did. Yeah, look, there are dozens of experiences all around the country, and I think you're right. It's all, it's all going to be different. The biggest concern that you have in leading the business side is, like the word that you mentioned, the habitual nature of almost like a metronome of signing up for your tickets, paying, making payments, going to games, going on road trips with you, things like that. When that metronome gets upset, all of a sudden other things come in because uh, on a a typical year to year, Americans save around seven or 8%. This year so far, American savings rates is over 20% because there are no places for people to put that additional money to use. Now I agree with you. I think, there will be places, pockets where people, you know, circumstances change. People who age 12 months between the time they last spent something, they make different choices 12 months later than they did a year ago. And they determine, you know, maybe that's not as important as it used to be. And I've replaced that spending with something else. Now, I do think trips is something that people will, I think the travel industry is one that will rebound to a really high peak, but that's going to take some time. It's not going to be sort of this V recovery that we've been talked about. Well, that's a human thing, way. right? We, we all like certainty and we all like yep. variety. And yep. that's the variety part of, I got to do something. It's why I'm going to Houston. I'm really not going yep. for the game. I'm not yep. going to hang out with John Harbaugh or talk to Lamar because I'm not going to be doing any of that. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I, it's almost perverse why I'm going, quite frankly. I'm going because I'm a writer, I explore, I journey, and I guess I'm looking for variety, right? Because like, it would yeah. be very easy to just stay home watch game on TV this weekend. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people have been put in that position. Look, there are the broadcasts themselves. You're not noticing this, but um, these telecasts, including the network telecasts, are being put on in a way where there's a relatively small footprint of people on site and a lot of it is done now back remotely, as we call remote telecasting from places in New York and Connecticut or Charlotte, North Carolina, places like that. That will also continue because that's a cost cutting maneuver. And if that doesn't affect the telecast and it helps the bottom line, then I think some of these things that we're experiencing will become part of the norm. I do think there'll be a bounce back. I do think people will travel. I think there's some other aspects of that. But there's going to be some replacements happen in that 12 months since the last time you bought a Ravens ticket or an Orioles ticket or whatever it is. And then suddenly, like I've always said, I think you'll go, but the frequency of your attendance is what will suffer. Instead of going three or four or five times a season, you may just decide to go once or twice because it whets your appetite, satisfies you. But at the end of the day, you tend to find other things. You've either saved that money and invested it, or you've saved it and you've, you've spent it on other things that have come up now that you find just as or more interesting well when you do spend that money the next time you're looking you're looking to capture that feeling right you know whatever that feeling is of i love the oros i love the ravens i love the terps i love tassel whatever it is umbc whatever it is that you go that you want to capture that again 
um, and the value for that when you haven't had it. it. It is fascinating when you have a slice of pizza you haven't had in a while as to how it tastes and how it makes you feel, right? Yeah. And, and I'm wondering when we all get back to normal how all this is going to make us feel because – and I guess this is the greater point. They've worked really hard to make this television thing awesome. And they've been doing that for 30 years to make it awesome. And now it's the only way we can experience it. They better be careful that it's not too awesome. Well, I think that's the point as we've talked about for a while, which is, and, and Adam Silver has come out and basically said this, which is they work really hard to make the games that are happening in the arenas, basically like a studio, a studio experience. And that's what's happened in the NBA bubble. That's what's starting to happen in NFL stadiums now, where you make it a studio experience. Why do you bring a studio audience in? You bring them in for a laugh track. You bring them in to do some applauding. You do all, all of a sudden, it becomes secondary to do that. That's the risk that they take. Because ultimately, in sports, people, before they invest their money, Nestor, they invest their emotions, right? The part of the brain that controls your emotions doesn't control language. That's why sometimes you say it just feels right because that's part of your brain saying it does feel right. There's no logic or emotion to it. So that's what I think is, is going to be the challenge for people, which is why I think you're going to see NFL teams really try to get people back in the stands in October, at least in limited ways, because you need to feed that habitual nature of coming back. So I think in places like Dallas, they'll have a lot more than they'll have in Baltimore or Washington, DC, you know, Maryland, but I think they're really going to try to do that. And here's the other big concern that you should be thinking about soon. What are they going to do in the Super Bowl? Or what are they going to do in Tampa? Are we going to talk about half full, socially distanced Super Bowl? Um, we're not long away from having to think about that because I think it's unfathomable that we're going to have a full stadium in the Super Bowl. The question is, how many media are they going to allow in? Um, I think, you know, what used to be a big media experience, I don't think that's going to be the case because they're just not going to take that risk. So they're going to have to start thinking about that. And I think the media will start musing about it pretty soon and start to contemplate what that's going to be like. Well, at uh, 25 Super Bowls in a row for me, uh, Marty, I, you know, we broadcast them there every year. Yeah. This is the year where, like, we, we have the best team, right? And, and yeah. I guess you'll have a chance to figure that out in Houston and a chance next Monday night against Patrick Mahomes. The whole world will see Lamar and, and Mahomes and all of that. Um, I, the, this corridor and what you've represented and what I've represented for three decades here – it's a fascinating case study for all of these franchises now, right, where the Washington Nationals are the defending world champions and never got to eat off of it. The Orioles are the worst team in baseball that didn't even want to play this year that sort of made it through half-assed. Now they'll go into their offseason. They made some trades to get some more, you know, buoy talent and quad A talent, whatever they're doing. And the Capitals hire a Stanley Cup winning coach after they make the mistake with Trots. The – Washington football team, I almost said the R word. I stopped myself. That's the first time I've stopped. My, the Washington football team's trying to figure its brand out. And the Ravens might go to a Super Bowl, and I can't sell a road trip or take anybody. It, it really is a strange time for these franchises and how they relate to their fans, how they relate to television, how people engage with them. And for the Washington football team to, to have a win on Sunday to start the season – um, you know that that, that that bandwagon's bigger than maybe it leads on, but just prosperity for them in the beginning after all Danny's been through the last nine months. It's an interesting storyline, I think, for all of us locally who haven't followed sports much the last six months, and now we're, we're back in the pool again, right? Yeah, well, when, when sports either isn't played or it's not played in its regular format, we tend to look at now sort of what's the strategy, what's the business, what's happening in that off-field there's a lot of in, there was a lot of interest in the Washington football team, the team formerly known as the Redskins, as to what they were going to be like. Well, suddenly, a, a win in week one thinks, well, maybe this is going to be okay. Maybe we're, you know, maybe, maybe we're we could okay sell some it. merch. Yeah, maybe we're, you know, with our gym class uniform type thing that we're this going to work. No, it's not going to work. At the end of the day, they're going to have to pick a team name. The NFL is going to require that. They're going to have to go with that. And again, again, back to the locally, back to the Orioles they're getting the benefit of a 60 game season of which people are going to skip over in the history books and, and, and just say kind of what really happened. And the challenge is going to be next year. Their biggest challenge is going to be next year. Two things now putting on a team on the field that looks and feels competitive 
and then convincing people who haven't been spending for over a year to come back and do that. I don't think opening day will be an issue, but I think the second and third homestand of that next year are going to be a tremendous challenge in this market because people are going to have forgotten to spend on Oriole baseball. And unless you're telling us that we have a more immediate chance to win, I think people begin to understand, I'll just sit on my dollars and hopefully maybe something will happen in the future. But you can't count on that in Baltimore. And I know you hate when I bring this up. And if they ever move the team, you know, it's going to be a dirty morning for you and everybody else who ever doubted. But um, Justin Timberlake, you, 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 you tweeted this out last week and you're right next to Dan Duquette's acquisitions, but (laughs) seeking a Nashville team, uh, the Orioles, you conveniently left out the fact that next year's the last year of the lease. I never sort of forget that um, because I watched them open SoFi Stadium the other night, and I was there when Stan Kroenke he said, St. Louis, you know, right. I'm, I'm taking your team, and right. now nobody's at the games. Same thing with Spanos, same thing, you know, you, you know th- throughout all of these moves, and even going back and finding the old Art Modell pictures back in 96 and all that, teams move. It happens. I didn't have much in Major League Baseball, but we're in a different time and a different money time, and I don't know what – what kind of lease they, they want and what you and I have opined about the neighborhood and then want half of Otterbein and parking lots and, you know, Comcast lives and Xfinity, all of these things, Budweiser live that they have out in St. Louis. This is no time for, to be screwing around as a municipality with your baseball team, but it's also no time to be like pulling down your pants either for the Angelos family at this point. We don't even know who that represents, but this is really it was nebulous before COVID now going into the last year of the lease, I have no idea how this baseball – I mean, I'm assuming they're going to do some little short-term, two- or three-year, five-year little thing to sort of cobble it together, but I don't know what the – why would Angelos do that? Why would he just move the team if he could? Well, I think, look, for, as far as Oriole fans, what I would say in terms of the Oriole nation out there, the guardrails for this team are Major League Baseball and their process in terms of relocation or not relocation. MLB has, since I've worked in the commissioner's office, I studied this, we were part of it. They are scared to death of losing their antitrust exemption. They don't want to get dragged in front of Congress and have to answer a lot of questions about why they allowed this team and that team to move. Well, that was it's the big story of how the Nationals existed, right? Yeah, like there was, exactly. a, there was a whole story in the Washington Post. I, yep. I wrote about it in the Peter Principles. You can go back. The yep. real reason the team wound up there was to, 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 to mollify yep. the hill. And yep. to shut every Washington will never come after us if we put a team there. Right. And they, I haven't heard the words antitrust in 15 years in, in regard to baseball. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, so they, they, they manufactured a sale. Baseball actually bought the Expos from Jeffrey Loria, right? And actually held on to them, owned them, and then eventually sold them. They, they moved them to Washington, placed owned them. them and placed them in Washington, and then, and then sold the team to the learners. So that's what they're incredibly – concerned about. So when I look at things from the, from the viewpoint of will a team move, will Baltimore move to Nashville, et cetera, the reason why I'm so pretty certain that it doesn't happen in that format is because of their concern for an antitrust uh, exemption, because that has saved them in so many different ways. It's kept them away from lawsuits that the NFL has been dragged into by Al Davis and, and other people. But having said that, right, it doesn't mean that things are going to go well here. Look, I think at the end of the day, I think you're right, either short term or medium term, I think they come up with a lease agreement. I think it's more likely, I'll just say this, I think it's more likely that in the short to medium term, the current ownership group sells the network and retains the team, at least in the short term, until there's some disposition of, of Peter and, and, and the assets and what happens with him ultimately in his health. I think there's a greater likelihood that the network gets sold. And the reason why is there's a market for the massive network. Sinclair up in Hunt Valley has been looking at buying additional networks. There's four that are owned by AT&T. They want to sell those. And so I think there's an opportunity for that. Well, Sinclair's bathing in what they already bought, right? Literally. Yeah. I mean, they, they made the deal at the worst time. Uh, their stock is about half of what it was. But at the end of the day, they own the rights to these franchises and the teams. And to pick up four in, in AT&T markets or pick up one or two here. So I think that's the more likely transaction to occur first before and maybe make a deal with the team. But look, at the end of the day, Nashville, it's a long way for them to come into expansion. I think it's great that they have Justin Timberlake and they have some other folks there, but you need city money, you need state money, you need people to, to vote. 
there's a lot of things that have to happen. Uh, I think Nashville, Charlotte, couple, Portland, uh, for all of its issues right now, have been great baseball markets. Um, perhaps one or two of those does, but I think baseball also has desires outside the United States, whether that's Mexico City or Montreal, because they want to sort of internationalize the game as well. Marty Conway is the good professor at Georgetown. You can follow him, smart people do, at LinkedIn, as well as uh, out on Twitter, at Marty Conway. Um, enjoying this little piece of sports for what it is? I mean, we, we actually had a day last week where first time in the history of mankind all the sports were playing on the same day, uh, which probably would have taken a plague in, in order to make that happen. But, uh, but, but it is quite sporty all of a sudden, right? And, and it's... Yeah layered on top of layers that like Stanley Cup finals and NBA finals, all this is happening. I mean, I'm talking to people in Houston this week. They're talking about the NBA is like something that's happening. The NBA is like not even happening in my house, right? Like <laughs> it's just not. And, yeah. and I, I saw that the Dallas stars are in the Stanley Cup finals. I didn't even know who was in the Western Cup. Like these things are happening, mm -hmm. but they're not really happening. And, and Marty, I used to be a sports guy. And I think that's important to note. That's why it was important for football to begin on time. Uh, these other things are out of sync with the exception of baseball, even though baseball started late. You're absolutely right to have the uh, Kentucky Derby, you know, and the, and the NBA semifinals or whatever they're at occurring at the same time. Just, you know, these are some unusual times. And so it's going to hurt. It's going to, you're right. They're layered up. Uh, we did this calculation through a, a, a firm in London Typically, there's um, around uh, 2,500 major sports events per year around the world that, that average more than 5,000. 500 of those, Nestor, are going to occur in the month of September. Everything from the U.S. Open to the French Open to the Kentucky Derby, you name it. So if ratings are going to be hurt, if people like yourselves aren't going to be able to follow all these, that's why some people aren't going to do as well this year. Football knew, the NFL knew it was important to keep that timing important because people understand and they sort of their biological clock exists around the NFL kicking off in early September and finishing with a with a Super Bowl in February so I think that's why you feel more certain about the NFL than you do about the NBA because of all the moving around I love to feel certain that they're going to play a Super Bowl and you know like all this stuff we have the best team right so like that's the really cool part of this from my perspective is you jet out you jet in at four o'clock on Sunday afternoon with the Ravens this this could be as much fun as it could be given the circumstances because we do have a pretty good football team here. Yeah, well, uh, look, at this point, everything looks, particularly in the AFC, and, and uh, I, but again, I think that's why Baltimore is doing such an interesting job of sort of teasing the fans a little bit. I think there will be an opportunity for them to get some fans back in the stands in October and probably November. I think for that reason, uh, they want to be sort of obedient now and compliant because ultimately they know that in the back half of the season, there could be something special here and they don't really want to spoil it by, you know, doing something now that draws a lot of attention or draws a lot of caseload, something like that. So I think the back half of the season could be really interesting. And I think you'll have more friends in the stands in October and November or early December uh, than you will in September. Always great to visit with you. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and uh, let's stay in first place up here. And you and I get together a little later on in the month, maybe talk some World Series. They, they're still going <laughs> to – baseball playoffs are ahead. I, yeah, in, 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 in bubble cities, you know, in L.A. or Texas where, yeah, it's just going to be really, really uncertain. But, again, they need that money. They need to make sure those games happen, just like the NFL teams need to make sure these broadcast windows are filled uh, because the, the, the riches are so big. Well, a lot of money floating around in TV and sports and the business of sports. Marty Conway covers it better than anyone. You can find him at Marty Conway on Twitter and LinkedIn and the Georgetown University and, uh, and, and usually uh, sometimes over in the Middle East, but not lately, not with the passport situation lately. No, no. Nasty WNST.net finds me. We're merging the streams of WNST.net and Baltimore Positive all happening this weekend. I'm headed to Houston. Luke is covering all things Owings Mills. We are WNST.net AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore Positive.